Time's run out, Jack. It comes now. Drawn with ravenous hunger to the man what bears the black spot. Welcome to this compilation of my best Pirates of the Caribbean videos. Today we've got visual effects, prop making, and more, so sit back and relax. I've got a lot of stuff for you. Today we're going to be making Jack Sparrow's Baldric from Pirates of the Caribbean to hang on my belt and hold my sword. You can do it for your swords as well. It will unsnap like that and go on a belt. We're gonna get right into it. It's a different video today, you know, crafts, cosplay kind of thing. But, all right, let's go. All right, so the first thing you need to do is get a piece of uh, fake leather, faux leather from Hobby Lobby, wherever you get it, and fold it in half like this. And then you can take the free paper template, cut it out, and the free paper template will be linked in the description cut it out and trace it onto there. And then we'll just cut this shape out of the pleather, carefully following the lines. All right, now we have our shape, and we can get into putting the snaps in to put it together. So, the first thing you need to do is make sure it stays folded on that seam. Line it up like that. And by the way, if you didn't cut it out perfectly, like I know I didn't cut it out super well, it's just take scissors and refine it better, but, you know, it would take sharper scissors to get a more cleaner thing like this. I, I used it with different sharper scissors the first time and it turned out much better. But the next thing you need to do is take, get it folded over, so, and then take an awl. These are basically just needles. You could probably use a needle too. It's just, you know, sharp. And Find the first part, place where you need to put a button. Now, for me, that's going to be right about in between the bottom of the V and the side here on this side. So then you just take your awl, stick it in, poke it, and then you can kind of pick it up, force it through, like so. And now you've got a little hole in there. And then the next thing you want to do is take one side of your snap, like this piece is rounded and it's pointy, and put it through the outside hole like that. And then flip it over and you can see the sharp part sticking through. Now grab one side, you should have two sides for your snaps. You should have one like this and one like this, as well as multiples of these just caps. So take whichever side you think would be good for the first one and press it on there. Then take your snap riveter thingy, put the bigger part right here on the cap, like that and then the gel ish part there like that and once you get that centered up just push really hard Ugh. all right one side down a bunch more to go <laughs> so in this way we can do the other side and once I get through all the part places where they're going to go, I'll just fast forward and you can see me do it in a faster motion. So now that you've got this side, see, you can take the other style, which looks like this for me, and thread it on there 
like that. Take your thing, your thing, okay, your riveter tool, put it on there, squeeze it in, and look at that, I screwed up. So, if you don't get it centered, you just need to break it off and try again. So, that is exactly what I will be doing. So, just thread your orange part, put the pointy end through the hole, put on the opposite type is the one you just did. So this is what it looks like right now. And tool on. You get the idea. Um, so, once I have that centered, push it. Uh, and then, as you can see, we've made it snap together like that. Now we're just going to do the rest of it. Uh, I'll just outline right now. There's going to be one here and here. Quick break in the fast forwarding to show you this. Now we have those two snapped together and they look good. They can come undone if you need to unfold it. And we're going to move on to doing one right here. So, yeah, just wanted to let you know where the next hole is going to be. And that is all of the snaps on there and I'm thinking I think it looks pretty good so the next step would be to paint the snaps if you want them to look more like metal a bit like that um, I used some acrylic paint in a bronze color and just dabbed it on with a paintbrush that doesn't matter a lot but yeah that worked out pretty well second try <laughs> for making one of those and basically the sword goes in through there like that and then it can go on a belt like this belt that I have it's off camera right now you'll see it in just a second but like this belt and then since it unsnaps, you can get it through there, snap it back on, and then you can wear this at your side pretty easily. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I am excited that this worked out and so easily first try, and it'll be great for my Jack Sparrow cosplay, and hopefully it has helped. Today... We're going to be making some aged paper using acrylic paint and water. First, I went ahead and drew my design, went with the turtle. I was uh, having trouble thinking of something to draw. Anyway, mixed together some acrylic paint and water. We did about one part acrylic to two parts water, and then you can use a brush or a paper towel to apply this to your paper. You want to be pretty heavy with it because it uh, it dries a lot lighter oftentimes. After I'd thoroughly covered the paper with the acrylic water mix, I began dabbing it with a dry paper towel. This just makes it take a little bit less time to air dry or blow dry. Then I took a heat gun, blow dryer would also work, and just began to 
uh, dry it very rapidly. You can see where the white reflections are going away, how fast it actually dries up. This also rapid drying creates a wrinkly effect in the paper uh, once it's all cured and dry. I went in with another pass of the acrylic and water, just in the light spots, because I thought it looked a bit too light. For an extra touch of realism, I went ahead and added some darker paint. This was black and green and yellow in water. I only did it in a few spots where it had darkened a little bit faster over time. And here it is in all its turtle glory. I think this one turned out quite well. Next, I'll show you another example, but we'll speed through it pretty quick. Here, my sister is writing out an entire page of a book to use as the design for this weathered paper. Next, she cut it out with deckle scissors to make it look like it was torn. These scissors have an interesting pattern on the blade, and this makes it look like the paper was ripped or cut with a dull object. Now that the design was complete, she began the weathering process. We're using the same yellow and brown water paint from earlier and applying it liberally with a brush and a paper towel. She began in an interesting pattern, but altogether eventually switched to paper towel. Another kind of technique you can use is to mix a little bit of an accent color or a color that you'd like to show up in little spots into your paint wash, but don't mix it in quite as good as the rest of it. Then it'll show up randomly when you least expect it. We discovered this by accident. After she was satisfied with the look of the weathered paper, we lit up a little tea light and began to melt some wax to drip on it, because we thought it would be a little bit neat. When it was all finished, it kind of looked like blood, which wasn't what we were going for, but it, I mean, it looked interesting. So, it looks a little bit less gory once it dries.
One last trick before you go. Pick up your paper, wrinkle it into a ball, and then unfold it. This will add interesting texture and details, like it's been wrinkled into a ball and unfolded. Today I'm going to show you how I made this shot of me getting shot. Alright, so here we are in After Effects. I've got my videos loaded up and I'm ready to begin uh, going. So basically we've got the video of me firing the gun and the video of me getting hit. Now I've taken the liberty of untracking my little uh, blow wound here so that I can show you how to track that yourself, but we're gonna go ahead and begin with the first clip. Now the first clip is pretty simple all we have to do is add in the muzzle flash, which is this, and the background glow. I also added some sparks coming out of the hammer, because that is how flintlocks uh, work. It's a little bit stylized, but I think it looks okay. Um, and then the muzzle flash. Muzzle flash is from Footage Crate. Um, I will put a link in the description to where you can find it. Basically, all I did for that was uh, line it up, drop it in. It looks pretty great right off the bat. The more important part that I'm going to show you is how to do the glow here. Make it look fairly realistic. So, basically, what you want to do is duplicate your background footage layer, like so, and then trim it down to just a frame where you have a muzzle flash. Most muzzle flashes are going to be one frame. So you select your clip that is only one frame, go to Effect, Color Correction, Curves, and we're going to start by bringing it up. We're also going to use the pen tool to make a mask around about where we think would look okay. So with that covered, we'll hit F to expose the feather and just bring out the uh, feather of the mask. That looks pretty cool already, but I think we want to make it a little bit more uh, red and a little bit more orange. So the way we get a little bit more yellow introduced is by taking out a uh, blue. Now I think I like that. Looks alright. You can just adjust the feather as well till you get something you like. So now when you fire the pistol, it will make the room light up. Now that looks a little bit harsh. I would like to feather it out more. There we go. A little bit better. Uh, for the sparks, same thing, just an element from Footage Crate. You can uh, adjust them by just dragging them around and put them wherever you want. And I just threw them in because I thought they'd be fun. Now that we have the first clip complete, we can move on to the second one. The second one is a little bit more complicated, but you'll uh, you'll get it. It's simple enough. So we start with our background layer. I will delete this off so I can show you how to do it. Our background layer, we want to track my shirt. Ideally, you want a tracking marker where your uh, bullet wound is going to be. I have it in the center of my shirt, which worked fine, but I would recommend putting it uh, like near where your tracker is and then just covering it up later because uh, this doesn't work quite as well. So I'm just going to put the bullet wound in the center of my shirt for this tutorial because uh, why not, even though it doesn't match up. So what we want to do is track it with uh, Mocha AE. So that is a plugin that comes with After Effects. Boris FX Mocha, Mocha AE, and then to open it up, just hit this button and we shall get another window. Uh, you can close all these things, you don't really need them. Um, and then we'll zoom in and begin to track. So we grab the X spline tool, make a bunch of little points, the more the merrier. It just might take longer to track. 
And when you're done uh, making the points, just right click out of there and you've got it. I would just track everything just for fun and hit T to track forward. As you can see, it's doing pretty well so far. But at that point, it'll lose it. And that's where we went. So that's all we have in Mocha. We'll hit this little download button and you can close it. Now we'll go down to tracking data and hit create track data, selecting our layer there. And then uh, we've got our tracking data. So we want to apply it as a transform and to a new null. So we go to layer new null object. And that'll allow us to give her something to uh, parent to. So we'll go to null5, no, that's not it, null5, apply export, and now we have our little red uh, box that is tracked to my chest. So we'll take our bullet wound, which is just footage from Footage Crate, I made it freeze on last frame so it stays forever, and we'll take our parent pick whip, stick it to the null, and then just slap that wherever you want. And now... As you will see, it sticks pretty darn good to my shirt. And then we will have a problem when I fall forward. This isn't going to be a problem for all of you, obviously, but um, we'll just see where it loses the track, which is about there. So we'll hit U on the null and go to the last good frame, zoom in a little bit and start deleting keyframes. We don't want these bad keyframes, they're just screwing it up. So zoom in a little bit farther and there we go. We'll make our own keyframes. So right here, just do the last couple of frames and we're gonna use motion blur uh, automatically applied by After Effects. So that'll really sell this look. Now the way you turn on motion blur is by hitting the little motion blur uh, button for the comp and then also toggle switches and modes on the layer itself. Now as you can see that looks pretty good. This actually tracked quite well. I would still recommend doing it like if it's supposed to be on your shoulder like you can see I'm looking at my shoulder. Still definitely recommend actually tracking a point where your bullet hole is supposed to be. But for the purposes of this video, I think it turned out quite nicely. If you want to blend your bullet hole in with your shirt a little bit more, you can apply a Gaussian blur like I did. Um, it just, I just think it looks too crisp uh, on its own because my video is not that high res. And you can also go ahead and do a curves effect if you want. I'll just bring it up a little bit. And then one more thing we can try is taking down the opacity just slightly. Now that looks just fine. And I think we are done. Now with some creative sound design and a little bit of work, you can get this. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, uh, give it a like, subscribe, maybe. Check out ME Studios for more fun budget filmmaking tips, and I will see you in the next one.